Now we'll do some example problems that deal with friction and the equation for friction. In this case, we're given a mass of 15 kilograms and the coefficient of static friction, you see the little s there, mu sub s, is equal to 0.4. And there's no units on mu sub s. It's what we call a dimensionless number. It's just a number, no units, 0.4. We're told to determine the maximum force of static friction. And to solve this, you should understand that this equation, F equals mu sub s times n, because we're dealing with static friction, little s there, this equation gives us the maximum force of static friction. If I have an object sitting on the floor and there's no force pushing it, then there's no friction. But if I come up and exert just a tiny little force forward, then friction appears a tiny little force of friction F as a response to that. If I exert a bigger force forward, then the frictional force gets a little bit bigger. And if I exert more force, the frictional force gets greater. The more force I exert, the greater the force of friction that opposes it, but only up to a certain point. The force of friction can only be so big, and the, the biggest that it can be is the number that we get from this equation, mu times n. If I exert a force that's larger than that, then it will overcome the friction and the, the block will start to move. So we can solve this problem pretty easily. The maximum force of static friction is just mu sub s times n. But what is n? Well, n is the normal force holding the block up. That's normal, perpendicular to the surface. That's up in this case. And gravity is down. Now you can see that n has to be equal to mg. If n were bigger, the block would be flying up into the air, and it's not. If mg were bigger, it would be crashing down through the floor, and it's not. So as long as there's no vertical acceleration, we know that those forces have to be balanced. n has to equal mg. So I can rewrite the equation to say mu s times mg. And from here, it's pretty easy. We just put in the numbers 0.4 times 15 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And I pull up my calculator and I multiply. 0.4 times 15 times 9.8 comes out to be 58.8 newtons. You can see the kilograms times the meter per second squared gives us the newtons. Now let me say one more thing. In this problem, you can see on the diagram that the normal force is equal to mg. So mathematically, when we're doing the algebra here, we just replaced n with mg. That's often the case. Whenever an object is just resting on a flat surface like this, then the normal force n is equal to mg. But that's not the case in every single situation. What happens is, in, in many cases, n is equal to mg, and so we do this substitution right here. And students get used to doing that, get used to saying n is equal to mg, but it's not equal to mg every single time. So don't be, um, don't be confused when, you, when we run into a problem where n is not equal to mg. And we will. We will have some problems like that. So just, just be aware that in many cases, n is mg, but don't get so used to putting in mg for n that you think you can automatically do that every time. You need to think it through each time.